Hello there, and welcome to Bedrock Bootcamp with me, Nogri. This is going to be my Let's Play series and tutorial series on the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. Bedrock Edition of Minecraft is the edition that can be played on Windows 10, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mobile. This is not Java Edition, this is Bedrock Edition. We will be going through all the different survival tips and tricks, and we're working on some farms throughout the series. My goal is to keep this world that we're about to make till 1.17, the second part, drops with all the terrain generation. So we'll go through what's currently in the game, and then we'll go through some of the new blocks until we start Season 2 around the holiday season. So thank you for joining me, and I'm looking forward to see how it goes. Our goal for this episode is going to be to survive one whole Minecraft day. The first day, to be exact. The Minecraft day is divided up into two parts. You have the day and you have the night. The day is about 12 minutes and the night is about 8 minutes. The whole thing being 20 minutes. And at night is when all the baddies come out. You have spiders, skeletons, creepers, zombies, and a few other that are biome dependent. And we're going to try to avoid them, but at the same time we are not going to sleep through the night. Because we want to see if we can survive it. All right, so here we are in the Great World settings. We're going to go with Bedrock Boot Camp. It's going to be survival, obviously. And we're going to have it on hard. So that way we, we get the hardest difficult we can get on Bedrock. And we can also get better zombie villager hearing discounts. We're going to have no starting map, no bonus chest. World type is going to be infinite. The seed is going to be Bedrock Boot Camp. So if you'd like to play along, there it is. Simulation dis distance will be 4, which is what most servers have. And we're going to have show coordinates on, and, and we're going to have fire spread on, because that is the way the game is naturally played, so we're going to keep it that way. I also have a few resource and behavior packs on. We have Blue Jay's Borderless Glass. I have some bedrock tweaks for redstone-related components show which way they're pointing and if they're activated or not and just a few little ease of use features we're going to have foxy's armor stand mini blocks and mob heads now they these are not in the vanilla game but i feel like they do not add too much to the game they just add a few little extra decorative details on my twitch stream i have a redeem an armor stand reward and the mob head pack is great for that so that way I can actually pick a mob head and put it on the armor stand but yeah that's all we're gonna have on the world I also have the FOV changer installed on my computer so that way it can zoom in like they do on Java just to get a better view of things and that is everything set to go so let's go ahead and head out in there all right so here we are in the world all loaded up this is my first time seen in this iteration i did jump in earlier just to kind of get a look around and also a previous failed recording but so this was our spawn spot i would like to mark it somehow we're just going to grab some sand throw it down there so that way later we can use that maybe for something and here we are in the world looks like we are surrounded by some oceans we got some plains over there and some forest Got some mountains that way. Got a lot of animals running around. That's always a good start. And then we have a pillager raid tower over there. That will come in handy if we decide to make a raid farm. But now is not the time for that. Let's go look around and see what we can find. First thing all Minecraft players usually start with is punching trees. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you take care of your first tree, you're going to, want to open up the creative inventory. You want to take one lo all the logs there and make oak planks. Once you have a full stack or everything crafted into oak planks, go ahead and put them in the 2x2 two two and make a crafting table. Go ahead and throw that down. And now we can make a few little more advanced tools. 
Nothing too crazy because we're still early game, but we'll throw that there. Let's go ahead and make eight sticks. First thing we're going to do is put this half the sticks here, half the sticks here. We have a few things we're going to have to make. First one, if we make a T out of these planks, we get a pickaxe. Then if we take planks and go here, here, and here, and get an axe. Move this. Put this here and here. We get ourselves a sword. A few basic tools that we can start out with. Let's pick this back up. If it will work. That was a weird little glitch to it. And now we can chop down some more trees. We also want to look at taking out some of this grass. Every piece of grass you take out has a chance of getting you seeds, which you can replant later. Wow, these are a lot of seeds. Usually you don't get that many out of a small little stash like that. We can use these seeds to replant later and grow wheat. Ooh, we also want to get that. That is sugarcane. On bedrock, sugarcane grows really slow. So you want to grab more, have more to grow. We can use this for paper to make books and to make an enchantment area. But that's for another episode. Now we want to look at finding some animals and a place to ride out the night. So these are sheep. I'm not going to kill the baby ones. I don't like killing babies in this game. Yeah, I know. I just killed your mother right in front of you. I'm sorry. Horrible. As you saw, the sheep will give you wool and raw mutton. The raw mutton can be cooked in a furnace or and chickens will give you raw chicken and feathers. And depending on the color of the sheep is the, will be the color of the wool that you get. Right, we kill the white sheep, now we're going to kill this one. And we will get gray wool. There are 16 different wool colors in the game. I hope to eventually make a sheep farm that will have all 16 colors in it. Killing a pig will get you raw pork chops. And then killing a cow will get you raw beef and you have a chance to get leather. So when using a sword, you jump up on your way down, you hit the mob you're going after, it actually does critical damage, which makes your attacks more powerful. If you can hit them. Let's collect up a little bit of beef, or a little bit of meat. There we go. No! As we're going around, we have to remember to be collecting seeds, too. The more seeds we get, the faster we can get the food going. The other advantage of seeds is some of the animals, which I don't see a chicken around. Oh, here's a chicken. Will actually follow you if you're holding seeds out. Which will be good for when we're setting up our first little farming area. Also grab ourselves sunflower. And this is the leather that you get from cows. You need one leather and three paper to make a book. But we will talk about that later. Let's see if we can find a cave to do a little mining in. Get a few basic resources before the night comes. The sun is halfway through the sky, so we're halfway there.
So these little guys right here are squid. When you kill them, they will try to shoot ink at you like they did there to get away. And then they will drop ink sacks when you kill them. They can be used to make black dye. You can also use them to make a book to write in. I actually think I have enough to make. Let's go ahead and make one thing of paper. Make one book. And then we'll make a book and quill. We can use that to write in. We can write down important coordinates. But I think I'm going to use it to write down the comment of the episode. So every episode, when it, the next one comes out, I will have written down the comment that I liked the most from the last episode. And we'll find somewhere special to keep it. Do we have a cave here? Ah, uh, small little cave. That goes absolutely nowhere. And I do not have a shovel on me yet. So each item has a different tool that works best for mining it. Things like dirt, sand, and gravel, it is best to use a shovel. For stone, it is best to use a pickaxe. And for wood, it is best to use an axe. And for leaves, it is best to use a hoe. Oh, this is actually a pretty good seed that we have. We've got a desert over there. We have the ocean. We have stream hills. Looks like we have a savanna. So far, looking like a pretty good area to set up shop. All right, so a little while later, I have finally found my first cave. Down in the cave, we actually find our first bit of coal. We're going to go ahead and mine some cobblestone out and mine some of this coal out. We want to get a little better tool or set of tools than we already have. There are different sets of tools that you can get, wood being the worst and netherite being the best. We will work our way up to it. First we need to get wood, then stone, then iron. Gold's in there somewhere too, I don't know if I'd consider that better than iron, but it mines faster with less durability though. Then we have diamond, and then netherite. Each tier is a little bit more durable and a little faster at mining than the tier below it. All right, let's throw this down. Let's go ahead and... Ooh, we can craft a campfire. So with the campfire, put three logs, three sticks in this formation, and then one coal in the middle. That lets you make a campfire. Campfire, you throw down, and you can take your raw meat and fill up four at a time, and they will automatically cook on there. When they're done, done cooking, they will pop off. And while we wait... We are going to go ahead and make ourselves some better tools. First up, we have... We're across the top of the T. Got a stone pickaxe. Let's go ahead and make a stone axe. And then we're going to move this and make a stone sword. Are getting a little better tools now that we have enough resources let's go ahead and make a stone shovel and now hopefully we have enough to get us through the night as you can tell it's already got dark outside we have ourselves a little adventure on our hand and first off the bat we run into a creeper the creepers are the nice little guys that will run up on you blow up and mess all of your stuff up. We don't want to stay away from them. 
That's a creeper. Over there, we have a spider. And we have a skeleton jockey, who is a skeleton riding a spider. A zombified villager. A regular zombie. Right now, we really just want to keep moving. So a creeper will drop gunpowder. A spider will drop string and a spider eye. Actually, I do want to get one of those if I can. Zombie will drop rotten flesh. Ooh, then we have a witch. They have all, all kinds of different things they can drop. Oh, no string. Of course, the one thing I want. There we go. There's some string. Creepers will drop gunpowder. And see, he blows up, blowing a giant chunk in the area. Zombies also have a chance to drop the armor or tools that they have in their hand. I don't think he dropped it. Nope, so we're going to keep moving. Also, when you kill a mob, they have a chance to drop experience. Or they do drop experience. And experience comes in handy when with enchantments. Skeletons also have a chance to drop their bones, or they will drop their bones. And they have a chance to drop their bow. Ooh, is this a cave we can go into? We also have... If I can see him. Nope, you left us alone. There's an enderman running around, but we really can't get a good look at him. Nope, staying away from the creeper. There are a few different methods of trying to survive the night. One is to sleep, which is obviously the best one. The other one is to dig a little hole and hide it out. And another one is to try to go mining. And obviously you have your fighting your way through everything, but we are not geared up for a fight against all these mobs. So I kind of just want to find a good cave to go into so we can start Collecting resources. And so far, none of these caves are looking too hot. Here we go. This might be a good little cave system. Yeah, that's looking promising. Let's get down into here a little bit. Find a safe spot. Nothing around me. Let's go ahead and drop down this. We want to make some torches. I want more than just four torches. Oh boy. So you also notice that as I'm running around, the little hunger bars that look like drumsticks are going down. If those go down, all the way, I end up starving to death. But as when they are low like this, my health will not regenerate. As I eat, they fill back up, and then my health re will regenerate. Or the spider. All right, so let's go ahead and take this. Take four, eight sticks. Put the coal there. Now we can make a bunch of torches. Torches, torches will help light up the area and also help us find our way out. So what I like to do, let's get back to the start of the cave and do this right. Here's the exit. I always put the torches on the left, so when you're coming back out, the torches are on the right, so you can find the right way out. And here we go, we have our first set of iron. Go ahead and mine this. Now, when mining iron, you have to have a stone pickaxe or higher. If you try to mine it with a wood pickaxe, you will not get the ore. 
You hear all kinds of things walk around. Ooh, that sounds like a drowned. A drowned is the underwater version of a zombie. They live in the oceans, and they only spawn in the oceans. Or spawn in surface water, shall I say. Continue on a little bit. It's still nighttime. I don't want to get too much coal that I can't carry it around with me yet. That's a creeper. Me, sir. And he did not drop anything. Our creepers have a chance to drop gunpowder, which will be very useful later on in the game. Let's continue to go on down. Oh, we have some friends down here. Hello. So these are zombie villagers. They're pretty much the same thing as regular zombies, but you can actually cure them and turn them back into villagers. And there's a whole bunch of them down here. Ooh, this guy's all decked out in armor. Oh boy. And now we do a tactical retreat and hope we don't die. Let's go ahead back towards the surface. Just to see what time of day it is and see if we survive the first night. So far, nope, this way. Oh, hear that sound? It sounds like they're burning up. Looks like it's daytime. Right there, we have our first drowned. He can stay there, because he'll burn up if he tries to come out. And with that, we have survived our first night. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out. Be on the lookout for episode 2, where we start talking about getting ready to set up a base, finding a place that you want to live, and maybe get some farms going. So I've been Nogri, and we will see you guys next time.